try to record the lecture. Okay, all set, ready to go. So uh, this is the lecture 15. Again, this is the uh, lecture on the fugacity calculation. Uh, and I hope you guys had a, a chance to uh, read these slides I emailed yesterday uh, about this lecture. But before that, let's try to see what's what's going on. Uh, all of a sudden, we have introduced a, a new concept called chemical potential, and we moved on to calculate the fugacity, and we defined a bunch of coefficients. But what, what, why why we need those? Well, the uh, the reason is uh, let me try to call this. This is because we we are looking at uh, mixtures, right? Find the right angle for the iPad. So here I'm going to have a mixture. This is the alpha phase, this is the beta phase. In reality, we are uh, most likely dealing with uh, uh, the liquid vapor mixtures. So I'm going to have the components M1, M2, and then in the other phase, I'm also going to have M1, M2, all the way till Mn. And then in order to tell whether the system is at equilibrium or not, uh, we need to understand at equilibrium, we need to satisfy the three equations. Well, we are going to use the temperature. We are going to use the pressure. But that's not enough. We also need to satisfy that uh, the chemical potential for each component shall be exactly the same in the two phases. So the third equation is Y. Oh, that's nice. But they change it all. Never mind. So the this third equation is indeed the reason why why we need to understand the chemical potential. So this is the reason why we define this chemical potential. And I hope you guys recall that we have uh, four different ways of defining the chemical potential, right? Uh, the mu i is defined as dg, dmi, I'll leave this to you, da, dmi, what is going on? And then dh, dmi, same as du, dmi. Okay, this is uh, this is because we are changing the energy equations, uh, G H A U, now as a function of their corresponding independent parameters together with M I. All right, so this is the reason why we we when we move on uh, from the pure component pure phase to. Uh, component mixtures or phase mixtures, we have to modify the general equation of all the energy equation. Well, you may ask then what, why we even bother to calculate the energy? Or because the energy is our pure descriptor to describe the system evolution. So we need to satisfy that when, when, when the system is evolving, the energy should be decreasing. So that is a trend of the universe when it's moving from a random state to the uh, equilibrium state, okay? So this is why we try to monitor the energy, but then for the energy, we need to identify the uh, 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 independent parameters. And now out of those independent, three independent parameters, we need to identify that there's a new one called chemical potential. So this is the one. Uh, the other is about uh, now moving forward, we understand the chemical potential is not very convenient to uh, appreciate to calculate. Then we uh, we spent the previous lecture to uh, convince you that well, there's one other guy called chemical uh, called fugacity. Fugacity is uh, uh, almost the uh, equivalent equation to the chemical potential idea. Then you may ask, well, what's 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 the definition of chemical? Uh, no, what's the definition of fugacity? Well, fugacity is nothing special. When we try to move on using the chemical potential understanding, we realize that uh, d mu i at uh, uh, 
fix the temperature for the ideal gas it would be RT D log PR. However, unfortunately this equation is only valid for ideal gas. Right? Then we said, uh, well, let's try to use that form, try to un understand the other stuff. Let's say real gas, liquid, even solid. Let's try to use this form and let's try to write down, now this is D mu I for the real stuff, let's try for the ideal. Now this is R T D log F I. So we call this Fi, we, 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 we are defining this new quantity Fi as uh, effective, effective pressure, right? So we call this, well, now we have this uh, uh, fugacity and fugacity is the universal descriptor to anything, uh, gas, liquid, solid, whether this ideal gas or ideal solution, whatever, we're going to use this fugacity, right? And then of course, by introducing this uh, fugacity, de fugacity definition, there's one equation is implied is uh, when you try to push the limit, when the pressure goes to zero or volume goes to infinity, because we are going to utilize this today uh, in today's lecture, when the volume goes to infinity, then we are actually pushing the system back to the ideal gas. So if this is the case, then we need to satisfy now this is the same idea. Can I ask a quick question? Sure, go ahead. Uh, so, so pretty much if we have a really big volume, then we use the ideal gas uh -huh. instead of the fugacity one? Yes, but, okay. but I hope that from this moment on, you always use the fugacity to uh, identify your calculation. So you start with fugacity, then you try to justify if this is the low pressure or huge volume gas phase. So if this is the case, you're lucky, you, you, you can move on to use partial pressure for those calculations. Otherwise we are going to calculate in a hard way what the fugacity would be. And one just last question. Sure. So it's either pressure is low and volume is really high or both? Well, the, the, they actually mean the same stuff. Oh uh, yeah, fair enough. So, yeah, PV is MRT or PV is RT. So, so they, they are kind of identical. So you can pick up uh, whichever you are uh, happy with. All right. So, Sounds good. Thank you. yeah, this is the reason why, why we are so obsessed with that chemical potential quantity <laughs> or the uh, fugacity calculation because we, we need that to move on to calculate any mixture whether it's one component, the mixture phases or multiple components, multiple phases. We, we, we just cannot avoid using the uh, fugacity calculation. And uh, uh, we, we, we may feel like, you know, uh, most of the time we are dealing with the pressure because we, we are indeed looking at the low pressure region. So this is why we can use, uh, we use the pressure to calculate and figure out whether it's at equilibrium or not. But indeed the idea behind using pressure is we need to simplify and, and we need to justify uh, whether it's adequate to use partial pressure instead of fugacity or chemical potential. So the chemical potential and fugacity, they are the real boss behind partial pressure, right? So that is the, uh, the, the one we discussed. And then when we uh, look at the uh, calculation, especially for the mixtures. So we try to extend some, some, some discussion. We say, well, what if I have the system with very similar molecules? Their intermolecular interaction is, uh, is uh, uh, quite identical to each other and they don't care whether they have other molecules uh, present in the mixture. Then we call this as the ideal solution. So we have A, we have B, so the AA intermolecular interaction is very similar to BB to AB. Transitive, okay. So those would be the ideal, we call this as ideal solution. Right, so now if this is ideal solution, 
you just need to look at their, their, their ratio, let's say FA. Now we, we don't have 100% of A, but we can, we can calculate the fugacity of A is really proportional to the uh, molar ratio of FA in the pure phase. Right? Very similarly, we have this FB. On top of that, we have one, one uh, e equation hidden, which is XA plus XB should be one. Right? We have we, we have the two component uh, mixture over there. So over there, we, we, we now have some discussion of the uh, Rout's law, right? So we say that well, we we uh, we can use uh, the low pressure. Rouse law, which is uh, if we are looking at the vapor phase. Raise my. Okay. If I'm looking at the vapor, at the low pressure and uh, the uh, uh, their interactions are quite similar for the uh, ideal solution, then I can calculate any component in the vapor phase V or G is a YI of the P total. For the liquid region, calculate anything in the liquid phase. And for the liquid at equilibrium, it should be corresponding to the same uh, fugacity or partial pressure of the vapor phase. And the vapor is coming out of the PI saturation, uh, uh, XI. Uh, let me try to be. Uh, and that PI said is, a f is a for pure I, PI said at temperature T. Okay, remember that when we when we carry on those calculations, we always we always have we always have this fixed temperature. So for any pure component, once the temperature is defined, then the uh, liquid phase equilibrium saturation pressure is defined. You can call on Gibbs phase rule again to understand why if I have one component, two phases, then you need to only define one independent parameter. Here is temperature and everything else of the system is completely defined, including the saturation pressure. Okay. Okay. So that is the uh, idea we have had so far, but you can see that we, we, we we are kind of cheating here on the discussion. We, uh, we need to satisfy two assumptions. One is the ideal solution. One is the uh, low pressure region, right? Otherwise, you, if we have uh, 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 very different molecules, their intermolecular interactions are uh, 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 very different from each other and the pressure is not low, then uh, what would be the answer? And how do we calculate fugacity? So this is indeed why we are going to have today's lecture to cover those uh, general cases. Okay. Professor, can I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. Um, so to use the Raoult's law, it mm. has to be an ideal solution in low pressure? Yes. Those two solutions? Okay. Yes. And then we're about to discuss when you can assume that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, uh, uh, sorry, Justin, go ahead. No, that's all. Okay, so uh, I try to add that we are going to have some example problems or uh, some discussion on old exams to show you when we can see the obvious hints uh, from the problem statement that we are able to use the Rouse rule if it is not clearly indicated in the problem statement. So we, we need to use uh, uh, the general understanding of uh, molecules, whether they are similar to each other or not, and we need to have general uh, understanding of the low pressure region. Like I said, normally if the pressure is uh, 
uh, <coughs> is uh, lower than 20 bar, it's, it's pretty safe to assume low pressure region. But we will come back on the road to road discussion. Looks like I don't need to have the signal page to uh, have notes. And uh, here, uh, uh, we did not cover that, but I, uh, I just want to present some uh, slides or cartoon illustrations to show you when will be uh, the ideal solution. Again, try to recall that the solution uh, is not necessarily liquids. Uh, we can also apply the solution for the gas phase or even liquid phase. Uh, whenever I have uh, multiple components, I, I could easily call this as a solution. Uh, for gas, for liquid, and for solid, okay? So here uh, you can see that the, the uh -oh. pad got stuck. Oh no. Mm -mm. Okay. So uh, here that uh, um, the only thing we would need is that we uh, you just need to have the assumption comment that this would be this would be the force between the uh, molecules if they are very close to each other. All right. So this is this is just the illustration uh, to convince you the ideal gas no ideal solution phase. So here you are going to have the pure fugacity of uh, component one and don't feel you know odd using the fugacity. Fugacity is uh, indeed the more general phrase, uh, general term to describe any system. And the fugacity of the component two and they are uh, in their purely um, pure pure component phase. And now when you are going to combine the component A and B and their interaction would be very similar to each other. So the behavior the behavior of A and B uh, would not depend on, would not be affected by the existence of the other component, all right? All right. So this is what we call this, not ideal gas, but ideal solution. So you see that we have another type of head and that head means mixture. It's coming out of mixture. Mm, okay. We, we, we only have two hats in this course. One is uh, this type of hat, which is a partial molar property, right? right? So this is partial. Property of A. And the other is uh, this uh, triangle uh, hat is uh, to indicate this is in the mixture phase. And then we, this is just proportional to the Fi. No, F1, F1 is, uh, is, is the pure, like we have over here. For the pure fugacity of uh, component one and two, okay? Doctor, so that carrot there you're using for the, um, I don't remember what it is now, but um, like, is it cut off at the top? I can't, like you said like a triangle. So I'm seeing like a, like the top of the triangle it's just a, it's a carrot okay I'm thanks uh -huh. so this is the hat right yeah so uh then we uh, we uh, i think this slide is uh, uh no special it's just again to revisit the vapor liquid uh if we need to set up the equilibrium criteria then we need to satisfy for the mixture liquid, mixture vapor, we need to have this uh, uh, hat to identify this is out of the mixture. And for component one and component two, they need to have the uh, same fugacity uh, in the two mixtures. But there's no, there's no requirement that I don't need to satisfy F I, no, F1 in the vapor shall be the same as F2 in the vapor. That is not needed, all right? So we are only looking at the component itself throughout the multiple phases. And I need to satisfy their uh, fugacity would be the same throughout those phases. But for the others, we don't really care. 
Okay. Then uh, if we move on, like how we, we just discussed for the low pressure routes raw, then we, we are going to move forward. Now we are using the total pressure and uh, the molar ratio in the vapor phase and the saturation pressure of each component and its own uh, molar ratio in the uh, liquid phase. Okay, now when you look at those uh, uh, X, I, Y, I, we need to somehow record those coefficients, right? So, so starting from the, from the D mu I, temperature would it be R, T, D log P, I, this is for the ideal gas. The general term is R, T, D log F, I, this is for anything including the ideal gas. We can start with the fugacity and we, we are going to simplify that uh, uh, to the partial pressure. Okay. So let me try to make it a little bit better. All right. So then we, 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 uh, we're always interested in comparing each other. Okay. So this is why we are going to have the so-called fugacity coefficient, which is Fi define Fi as the PR, all right? We are going to have this activity called AI, right? <laughs> Which is defined as Fi over what? Over yeah, Fi yeah. standard. So this is at uh, the temperature of T. At, uh, Someone uh, asked what is the variable above AY? AI. AI. Yeah, what's the variable above it? Like what's the Greek letter, I'm assuming? Yeah. Oh, the, I call this as a phi. I don't know whether my pronunciation is correct or not. And, and in, I, I believe in the textbook it's using this. Right, oh. it's, it's just a coefficient. Right? Oh, okay. It's the fugacity coefficient, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a fugacity coefficient. And then uh, for the standard state, you see the same temperature, but this is, is uh, one bar. All right, according to the IUPAC recommendation. What else do we need to define? We also need to, we also need to look at this. this is gamma, right? Alpha and beta gamma. It's defined by AI over XI. This is coming out of liquid. Very similar to this XI. And we call this is activity coefficient. So we have a fugacity, we have a fugacity coefficient, we have a activity, we have activity coefficient. All right. All right. So, so the, this is the other stuff we, we discussed uh, in the previous lecture. So now when we, when we try to look at a simplified case, Two component vapor liquid equilibrium VLE, then according to Roche law, we would have this. So this is for component one, component one. This is for component two. We need to satisfy the two uh, sort of independent but somehow connected uh, equations, right? And we are going to have after chapter 10's discussion. Uh, we are going to look at the vapor liquid equilibrium and uh, the calculations involved. So, uh, 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 for example, it's quite obvious that uh, x1 plus x2 would be 1, right? And y1 plus y2 would be 1. So, we have another two equations uh, by the uh, Roche law over here, okay? 
So that is a, a kind of a, a quick review on the previous discussion so far. We have some idea on the ideal gas fugacity calculation, and we sort of have some idea on the ideal mixture or ideal solution, how we are going to calculate this is for the, uh, uh, the group A, catalog A, but what would be the other general cases? And here we, we, we want to understand the one special case called the dilute mixtures. So let's move on. So uh, on this slide, uh, I'm trying to put together again the ideas of the uh, uh, gas phase calculation. So start with the first one, ideal gas. Ideal gas by the understanding, there's no molecular size. There's no intermolecular interaction. And now if we try to calculate the fugacity of the ideal gas, it's, it's just the same uh, corresponding partial pressure. And we just need to understand what would be the molar ratio in the gas phase uh, together with the P total, then we have the fugacity, okay? So for the ideal gas, the answer is straightforward. For any component is uh, PI is YI P total, right? And of course, P total is, uh, P total is uh, relatively a small value. in order to satisfy the ideal gas uh, criteria. Still in the gas phase, but now this is ideal mixture, meaning, well, the, uh, the molecules could have their uh, distinguishable sizes and the molecules could interact with each other. But their intermolecular interactions are very similar. So F11 is very similar to F12, very similar to the interaction between two, two molecules. So if this is the case, then we call this as the ideal mixture. And over here for the, for the Fi uh, of each in the mixture, we just need to correlate to this uh, uh, F1 in the pure phase. And we call this as uh, F fugacity of the component two in the pure phase. Then we try to see what would be the ratio. Here you can see one over two would be one, two, three, four, five, five molecular over one, two, three, four, five. It's on one on one ratio, right? So if this is the case, then uh, Y, let's try to use Y for the uh, gas phase and XI for the uh, liquid phase. Then F1 is, F1 is what? Half. Y1 is also half, right? Then if we know the pure component one fugacity, pure component two fugacity, then we can calculate the fugacity of one and two in the mixture. So again, this is the gas phase and we need to satisfy their intermolecular interactions are very similar to each other, okay? Okay. In, in this equation, Will mm -hmm. we be given um, Fi pure? Like, how do we find? A good question. We don't know. For now, we don't know. We need to calculate okay. what is Fi pure, right? Okay. So th this will be answered uh, later on by the general calculation. Okay. Here, we just suppose we somehow magically know the Fi pure for the uh, single phase. Then we, we, we are able to calculate the mixture if this is a, a very similar molecules packed together to form the mixture. Gotcha. Right? Yeah, so the note here is that we, we, we really don't need to assume low pressure or the uh, low density or, or the ideal gas uh, condition, uh, as long as the molecules are very similar to each other. For example, if you are dealing um, the petroleum engineering molecules, say, uh, saturated alkanes, then this is a good assumption, right? If you are going to deal with uh, uh, very similar polymers, they are larger than, you know, uh, oxygen, nitrogen, but indeed they are very similar to each other, then this is also a good assumption. Uh, if you are going to deal with the biomolecules, they are even huge. Uh, however, they are still very similar to each other, 
then it's a good assumption to use again over there. So we, we, we need to have some general chemistry understanding to uh, tell whether those molecules are similar to each other, right? What's the difference between the ideal mixture and the ideal gas? Because the ideal gas has components as well, right? Well, the uh, ideal gas is they don't impact. There's no size. Oh, no interaction at all. Yeah, for the ideal mixture, they have their sizes, they have their interactions, but they just need to satisfy their interactions are very similar to each other. Uh, what happens if they're not very similar to each other? Then like... we can. Then we cannot. Then then even for the gas phase, we have to calculate uh, the fugacity one by one. Okay. Uh -huh. And that will be answered by the uh, last category of the general fugacity calculation. Okay, so for the so for the mixtures, it's it's based on the molecule size. Uh, it, it's more on the molecular interactions. Oh, okay. So right. I think he's just saying that like it's not an ideal gas. There's interactions, and the substances you're comparing have a volume. Yes, they, they have the volume. Uh, see that we, we, we don't mention that volume at all. It's, it's purely determined by their interactions. OK, okay cool. Uh -huh. Why do you call it an ideal mixture then? Because it's not an ideal gas. That's a little confusing. Well, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's still better than any random mixture, right? Because <laughs> okay. so they're easier to calculate. Are, uh, are very close to each other. So this is why we, we need to add some other prescriptive uh, word to the mixture. <laughs> <laughs> but here is a, one, one other example that thermal is a really solid uh, defined uh, topic. You can see that we try to take care of all those, uh, those differences between the, uh, the changes. <clears throat> all right. So I hope so far we are happy. Are we? Yeah. Cool. Nope. It makes sense. <laughs> it sure makes sense. Otherwise, it's my fault or Samo's fault. So uh, move on. Let's try to take a look at uh, uh, this special gift. Henry's law. Henry's law is uh, uh, looking at this uh, uh, special case that we have component one and component two. And then the, uh, the component two uh, as a, a dilute in the uh, solvent one is uh, uh, having a very small solubility. So you can ask about the uh, oxygen solubility in water, the uh, uh, oil solubility in water again, right? So uh, common sense would tell us that the solubility should be very small. So uh, we try to have the Henry law discussion to uh, take care of those special cases. They are special, but they exist. Uh, those would be the opposite of the ideal mixture. As you can see that now the component one and component two are very different from each other. Their intermolecular interactions are very different uh, to their pure components. So if this is the case, how do we calculate fugacity? Uh, and the other reason why we uh, want to discuss the Henry's law is uh, this is the third time to use uh, Taylor theory expansion. Can you tell me where would it be the first two cases using Taylor theory expansion in our thermal? The virial yeah. equation of state. Uh huh. Exactly. What about the second case? We 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 tend to borrow the uh, Taylor theory expansion. Uh, Give us the hint. <laughs> Anyone can recall and you see. Uh Vanderwalls? I don't know. Uh it's uh around the neighborhood of the Vanderwall discussion. Heat capacity. Nope. Is it just, oh. uh, it's, it's an, is it another equation of state? Uh, sort of dealing with the uh, states. Uh, so do you recall the uh, corresponding state principle? 
Yeah, we went over it. Yeah. So we, when we talk about the corresponding state principle, we were using the reduced units, TR, PR, VR. We were using the ideas from Randall, this is why Randall is involved in those ideas. And then we, uh, we, we have this simplified equation thanks to Randall. We say, well, we, if the molecules are going to satisfy the same plot of those reduced units, then we use the same equation to describe all sorts of molecules. So that is the, the that is the beauty of the uh, two parameter corresponding state principle. Then we moved on. We use the uh, three parameter corresponding state principle, and there we say, well, we are going to we are going to use the two parameter corresponding state principle to extend the third parameter. So this is why if you try to take a look at, it, we say this is z naught plus this is eccentric factor z one. So this is indeed coming out of the uh, second application of the Taylor cell expansion. Okay, so this is the third and this would be the last. Uh, no more torture along this direction. So let's, let's try to see what's going on. And so uh, first of all, this is the uh, 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 two molecules very, very different from each other. This is uh, the first statement. Second statement, if we look at this uh, fugacity, uh, we still try to describe the fugacity by a function of TPX2, right? The, uh, this is the second statement. The third statement is uh, when, when, when you look at the dilute, when you look at the dilute, we know that if X2 goes zero, so the extreme of the dilute solubility, then uh, there's almost no component too. Then of course, if this is the case, then the fugacity of component two would be zero because there's no existence. Uh, so there's nothing at all, right? So that is argument over there. So now you can see that we, we somehow identify this special point X goes, X2 goes zero, then the fugacity would be zero. I hope you see the magic uh, will come that we are going to use that special point and we are going to use Taylor seal expansion over here. So your phi's look different than that zero, for well, sure. This is not phi. This is zero. I just, I just need to emphasize uh, this is zero. This is not phi. Gotcha. Okay. Because uh, sometimes zero and O, it's uh, so confusing. Mm -hmm. So this is again zero. So. Let's try to look at the equation. So we say at x equals zero, no, uh, no component two molecules present, then we have this uh, uh, fugacity of that component two would be zero because uh, no molecular, no effective uh, uh, partial pressure, uh, nothing at all. So the fugacity would be zero at that special point. Now we are going to expand. Uh, the fugacity of component two in the power of X2 at or about X2 goes zero. So this, this is purely the description of Taylor cell expansion. Uh, so if this is the case, and now we can say that F2 of any X2 would be F2 at X2 goes zero plus DF2 DX2 and we know that TPX2 keep TP fixed and we have only two components. Uh, so there's no need to specify X1, right? And X1 is indeed changing uh, in uh, accordance with the X2 change. So if this is the case, then this would be X2 minus zero. So zero is this special condition. And then we are going to have the uh, factorial of d f2 d x2 power of two, again, tp multiplied by x2 minus zero, because zero is that special special point we are going to extend the Taylor theory. Uh, da, 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 n factorial dn f2, dx2 and 
x2 minus 0 to the power of a. So that is a general Taylor-Sutter expansion around x2 goes 0 for the fugacity uh, f2. All right. So we will come up with the equation very quickly. So this is the e equation uh, I, I just wrote down on the previous slide. And then here, we know that uh, if x2 goes 0, the f2 is 0. Right? And we know that those would be the higher orders. And you can see that x2 is a very small value. Then we say that the higher order components are going to make uh, altogether a very small contribution. So this is why we are not interested in those higher orders. So here, we only take into account this one. We have x2, this is multiply, and then we have this uh, partial, partial derivative. And we played that again, again and again. If we have no idea for now, let's call this as a coefficient. Okay, so this is why we call this as Hermes law coefficients. So now the equation is simplified that when, when the, uh, this should be x2. When the x2 goes zero, then the fugacity of x2 is proportional to the product x2 multiplied by Henry's constant. Although no, now I don't know what that constant is. But mathematically, this is the equation for the uh, dilute component two in the solvent one. Is that okay? Okay. So, so here is the summarize of the previous discussion, right? So in the end, this is the Henry's law. We need to know the very small solubility of component two in solvent one, we need to know the Henry's law constant. And we don't know that yet, okay? No, all right. And normally uh, we, we need to design other experiments to tell you, or we need to design the uh, uh, calculations using computers to figure it out. Uh, so for instance, uh, the, um, the uh, molecular simulation uh, um, tool would be helpful to figure out what would be the Henry's law constants. So when you have a problem on uh, this direction, then you probably will be provided with the Henry's law constants or, or uh, you, you are asked to calculate what would be the Henry's law constant from the problem statement. So this is indeed a one critical parameter we need to have in order to uh, finish the calculation for those uh, dilute systems. Okay. Can do. Yeah. I have a plot for you over here. And, and here I just want to quickly show you the mass. Uh, you may ask, uh, well, we, we are not going to have too much mass in the exam or even in the homework. Or why bother? Because math is really the logical uh, reasonings behind everything. If you uh, if you can somehow pick up some math, that would uh, be very helpful to understand those concepts, uh, some abstract concepts in some. It's the why I keep uh, keep debating whether I need to delete those or not. But uh, uh, for most cases, I think uh, I, I tend to keep those. Uh, indeed, I know that you guys uh, are having headache. Uh, seeing those equations, but those are the real me for thermal. Uh, not the equations, not the not the, the problem statements, but the math behind those uh, logical reasonings would be the uh, real beauty of thermal. So here I, I, I want to show you this equation, but I, I only need to point out that you can see that we try to run the linear, linear uh, extension. So over here, this is the general curve, for example, if you try to uh, measure or calculate the system uh, using the fugacity as a function of the components, and suppose you are able to calculate that or measure that in the lab. So th this would be the, the uh, curve. 
And you can see that when we talk about the uh, Henry's law, uh, we are only looking at this very small region. Okay, this is because we need to satisfy the dilute component at a very low solubility. So X, this component XI should be very close to zero. And the Henry's law is uh, telling us that uh, we are going to have this uh, fugacity proportional to XI uh, multiplied by its own Henry's law constant. So this is why when, when, when you try to look at some reference where the, uh, those plots are provided, they are going to have this extension. And they will tell you this is the, roughly how you are going to read the diagram. This is because you are having the curve over there and then you just run the linear extension uh, to read the Hermes law value. So you don't really need to follow the curve because uh, if you try to follow the curve over here, then it's no longer the uh, uh, region where we can apply Henry's law because the XI is, uh, is, is too large uh, to use Henry's law. Assumption. Can I ask a quick question? Sure, go on. When, at what value does XI become uh, too big to be used? <laughs> That's a great question. The, the, the quick answer is um, I have no idea, but uh, but normally if this is uh, less than let's say zero point one or 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 you know the real life problem or the problem statement uh, hints that hey there's a low solubility, then we 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 think about Hermes law, okay? But there's no no exact definition when would it be low enough to use Hermes law, uh, so the. This is something we can think of when we need to calculate those uh, low solubility systems. Then you try to think about if you have uh, uh, materials or uh, 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 enough data to utilize Henry's law. So it's always a good to think of Henry's law for those low solubility systems. That's a great question. And I do want to point out that you know in the uh, in the problem or in the real life we we simply need to recall this equation. Even you forget the telecellular expansion, fine. As long as you know this is the product between the uh, solubility uh, x two multiplied by its own Henry's law constant, then it's good. So this should be x two. Okay. So let's move on for the last case. This is a very general fugacity calculation. And this is a tough part. Uh, tough because we need to look at uh, uh, where those uh, uh, equations are going to uh, lead us. Okay, so let's start with the first case. So here, here I, uh, first of all, I want to point out that uh, we, we are looking at the uh, change of chemical potential to the fugacity. And we are going to utilize that uh, over here. We are going to have this fugacity coefficient that is defined as uh, Fi over Pi, which is uh, the exactly the same as Fi over Yip, okay? So this is why uh, moving forward, you, you will see that it's, it's identical to me or to you guys as well. When we need to calculate the chemical potential, it's very similar to the fugacity calculation. It's also very similar to the fugacity coefficient calculation because uh, we, we will have the YI or the total pressure from the vapor phase very easily measured. So this is why the three calculation should be leading us to the same answer, okay? So this is the first stuff. The second stuff is, I, I hope you guys can recall that uh, in our pockets, we have those easy measurements of PVT and those component measurement XI. So this is why we are going to discuss two sets of data. One is the so-called temperature pressure composition measurement. And the second one would be the, uh, I believe temperature volume composition measurement, right? 
and we will we will we will take care of that in a few minutes. But now let's try to start with this very general calculation. We don't have any easy simplification. There's no low solubility assumption. There's no very similar molecular interaction. So ideal solution is out of the choice. There's no very low pressure. So ideal gas assumption is not valid. So now we need to calculate in a hard way. So if we need to calculate the slide on here, would it be the quick visit of the equation we, we derived in the past? I put together slide 19 and 20 uh, to uh, save some time so that you don't need to visit the previous lectures. But indeed, we had the discussion over here. Right. So the whole purpose of having the three slides was uh, trying to revisit the very useful equation we have derived in the previous lecture, which is the chemical potential uh, partial derivative with respect to pressure would be the partial molar volume. Okay. So now I hope you see what's what's going on because we know d mu i is uh, RT D log Fi. And this is the general equation for any component, for anything, gas, liquid, vapor. So I hope you see that this is coming. We are going to replace D partial derivative mu i by RT D log Fi. And you can see that we are correlating the fugacity with respect to the partial molar volume. And we always claim that we are really good at the true experts on PVT measurements. Okay. If you are okay. not, you, you, you will be there at some point. So this is the idea. So we, we have derived this equation. This is coming out of the fugacity definition. And let's just put them together and try to manipulate. So we simply, we replace RT D log Fi, replace D mu I by this, and we try to move RT to the right-hand side, right? So this is then VI partial molar volume over RT would be this one, okay? So here there's no assumption, no ideal gas, no ideal mixture, no low solubility. It's everything over here. Move on. Move on. We are going to we are going to replace this by the fugacity coefficient. One reason is, like I mentioned, the fugacity coefficient is defined as Fi over Pi, and we are able to measure Yi P total. This is number one reason. Number two reason is that we, we want to see how, how this F, the fugacity coefficient is a departing from value one. If I run the calculation, if the fugacity coefficient is very close to one, that will imply that we could- Ideal. Yeah, we could use the partial pressure. And this is indeed ideal gas region, right? So this is why by calculating the fugacity coefficient, I can have a better understanding how the system is departing from the ideal gas region. So this is the reason why we are converting the fugacity calculation into the fugacity coefficient calculation. Okay. So now you, if you start from this equation, Vi uh, over Rt, then we try to put in this, uh, now this log phi i is log Fi over Yi P total, uh, which is log Fi minus log Yi P, right? So there we, we, we try to put, put this uh, over here in the last equation. So we are going to have uh, this equation to us. Okay. 
So I may have to explain to you why there is simply one over p. This is because when you try to look at this d log, log you get the coefficient of dp. This is uh, this is basically no, log yip over dp. Okay, I'm 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 not trying to carry this, but let's try to have this, and then. The first would be still this partial derivative of fi over dp. The second is minus d log yi p over dp. So now I'm going to coming back to this first stuff. Uh, I thought I put it somewhere quite close to use. Well, let me write down again for you. Keep it in mind P, V, T, X, I, or Y, I. They are independent from each other. Right. All those would be independent parameters. So this this is going to explain. So this would be still d log fi over dp minus d log yi over dp minus d log p over dp. Okay, I'm trying to separate this term. Mm -hmm. All right. And this term is zero because the, the uh, this is zero. The uh, yi is independent of pressure. So this is why you are going to have uh, this term minus, this is minus one over p. This is how we get rid of this uh, yi component from the equation. Okay. I don't want to. I want. I don't want to get into more headache. But this is the hint I need to provide you over here. How to how to or why I can somehow magically get rid of this yi because yi is independent of the pressure. So now now if we clean up a little bit. So this is still starting from the very beginning. This is sort of a summary of what we are doing in the previous slides. Then you realize that we are going to have this uh, uh, stochastic coefficient is uh, a function of this VI partial molar volume over RT minus the total pressure. And then we just need to run this integration, okay? To the to the uh, right hand side, it's nothing special. It's just from zero pressure to the pressure of interest. And then to the, when we move this as dp over here. To the left hand side, we should have this from zero to p d log phi i, okay? And this should be log phi i of p minus log phi i over very low pressure. And I hope you realize that if this is a very low pressure, then this phi i at p goes zero should be f i over p i should be one. Okay, low pressure, low pressure, fugacity equals to partial pressure. Fugacity coefficient is one. Log one is zero. Okay, so this is why this term will be zero. Makes sense. Is that exciting? Yeah. 
<laughs> Can I just clarify something real quick? Yes, yes, please. Uh, so this uh, integral is solving for the fugacity coefficient of an ideal mixture? No, it's the general fugacity coefficient. So far, we don't involve any assumption. Uh, okay. This is okay. for everything, for the gas, for the liquid, for the solids. All right, thank you. Yeah. So this is how magically on the left-hand side, we only have the fugacity coefficient. Is that beautiful? I think this is truly beautiful. Right. So now after enjoying this, moving forward, that's the equation we want to have on the cheat sheet. But I do want to share how, how and why we can come up with the equation. You can see that we have a few traps over here. This is the first one. And the other one, like I mentioned, the yi is independent of PVT. That is another trap we have to recognize. Okay. So <laughs> this is the equation we have. And uh, uh, we, we have some, uh-oh, iPad. Okay. We have some notes over here. Uh, so this is quite useful when we have the experimental uh, volumetric measurement, but if you have the equation of state, then it's it's not very easy. We, we, we have had this, uh, that problem in the exam one where we try to solve uh, the uh, Van der Waal equation of state, the cubic equation of volume, uh, and it's not easy, it's not interesting, and it's a headache to solve volume as a function of pressure, right? So here is the same challenge. If we have the equation of state, and if we need to somehow express this, uh, we need to somehow express this uh, uh, volume as a function of, of pressure, it's not easy. It's not easy to solve. Uh, we have to we have to rely on softwares uh, to calculate that. So this is why you know we 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 are also interested in deriving the second set, T V X variable. Okay, and I hope that with uh, this discussion with the T P X, uh, I hope that the second discussion will be uh, quite obvious to you. So let's move on. Before that, we have another thing we need to we need to discuss. This is because we're actually changing the subscript, right? So it's no longer the obvious uh, Gibbs energy. Because previously we somehow start with uh, this d mu i dp temperature composition, right? And we know that is the partial molar volume. But over here, we are using temperature, volume, and the composition. So there's no such equation available to us. So we have to somehow derive a corresponding, a corresponding d mu i, probably dv, right? So what that would be? Would it be the same, but you replace the volume with uh, pressure or? <laughs> it's actually a little bit complicated than that. So let's move on. So the, this is no longer the partial molar volume. No, that's not, uh, uh, that's not available to us, but we have Does lots of tools. Has something to do with entropy? Uh, has something to do with energy equation, has something to do with the fourth derivative, has something to do with the Maxwell equation. So those would be the three oh, no. choices we are having, right? So in the end of the day, in the end of the day, what we really have, those would be the real stuff we are having, right? So now if we quickly, if we quickly check who is depending, who is depending on TVX, and I hope you quickly realize that this is Helmholtz energy. So Helmholtz energy, we, 
introduced it a long time ago. But this is the first time we are actually using this because Helmholtz energy is indeed the function depending on temperature, volume, and composition, right? So now let's see what is going on. So we, we know that at some point we are going to fix this uh, temperature and composition. Uh, this is inspired. This is inspired by the previous equation. Nobody told us, but we sort of figured out that uh, along the direction, I, I, I may want to check on d mu i over dv or d mu i over dt to see which one will give us some easy equation to use. So uh, first of all, if we try to have this uh, dA, and I know that this is defined by dA over dMi while fixed, uh, keeping temperature volume fixed, right? This is the other chemical potential definition. And we are going to utilize this to start our adventure here, okay? So now when you look at, uh, well, partial derivative of Helmholtz energy, keeping temperature fixed, keeping, oh no, uh, the somehow volume fixed, then I, I, I could probably just have this minus P over there. So instead of the partial molar volume, I may have something related with the pressure. So that is the first guess. So let's, let's move on to see what is going on. So on here, I, I write down these uh, three partial derivatives. Uh, I hope mathematically it's, it's uh, uh, straightforward to you guys. So we see that if I keep volume composition fixed, then volume composition fixed, then this would be simply minus entropy. If I keep uh, the temperature composition, now temperature composition fixed, this would leave us to the minus pressure. If I keep the temperature, volume, and other composition fixed, then this would give me the chemical potential definition, right? So th this is still a simple manipulation of the four derivative. We're trying to fix two parameters, looking at the effect of changing the other uh, independent parameter, whether temperature, whether volume with a composition. Now move on. Look at the routine sort of check on the volume. Previously, we have this equation. And I want to remind you that the whole set of TPX discussion was, uh, was uh, built on this equation, right? So now let's try to take a look at what's the, what's the equation with respect to volume. So over here, we try to, try to borrow the definition of chemical potential, and we are going to switch the order like we did in the past. If we switch the order, then for this term, dA over dV, which is the negative pressure. So now the inner partial derivative would be just the partial derivative of pressure with respond to Mi, the composition. Again, keep it in mind, P, T, V composition, they are independent from each other. Okay, I know that you are sort of saying, wow, it's coming. Uh, well, let's see what's going on. We have this, what's the next? What's the next? I well, have next no is, idea. <laughs> I, I give you the idea. The but, next is, yes, indeed. Next is that we, we need to now manipulate this one, right? We sort of having this equation, it's not as be beautiful as this partial molar volume, but it's moving to PVT composition measurement, right? And we're happy to accept 
for now. So the next step is we are not trying to further think about how we are going to simplify that. There's actually no easy way because they are independent from each other. So what we can do is now we try to replace this uh, uh, chemical potential d mu i by rt d log fi. So we are here on the previous slide and now we try to plug in this equation. Nothing special, RT is over there. So now this is RT. Uh, so it's coming to this equation, right? So this is a turn, that is a turn. Pay attention to the negative sign. So far, nothing special. We just utilize uh, the fugacity definition of this equation. And I hope you see what's coming next. Next is we just take the integration, right? We are going to replace this fugacity again by the fugacity coefficient. Exactly the same as we did. Good. And uh, along the direction, so you can see that we are going to replace this partial derivative of fugacity coefficient over dv would be the log fi over dv minus, because it's, it's divided by this, minus log yi over dv minus log total pressure over dv. This is zero because we say they are independent from each other. Yeah. Okay. PVT, we put it over there because we are having equations to correlate them. Okay. So this is why now we, we move forward, we are going to have uh, uh, so this is a turn and on the on the right hand side we have this minus one over RT D, DP over DMI. Okay. Yeah. So now we, we simplify this is the fugacity coefficient. And then we simplify this is, uh, if you move this turn over here, then we have uh, on the right hand side, the two turns instead of one turn. And that's the best that we can do. How For the next, the middle term? I'm sorry. How did we get that middle term, the DLNY DV? That, the one that you canceled out, how did we get it? It's independent of the volume. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not asking why it canceled out. I'm asking how did we get it? Oh, that is a, that is a log. Log, is a log. Oh, okay. Is a log. Minus yeah. Is log. And then you separate those. Yeah. So the. This is why this term would be replaced by three terms. Got it. And then and the get rid of the second term and try to put it over there. Value. Yes. Okay. And now, now I hope you pay attention to here. So you see that we, we try to, for the pressure, it's zero from the pressure. And that is corresponding to infinity to the volume V, because they are the pair for the ideal gas. Okay. And I hope yeah. that I, I hope that this is the reason why originally I should have this minus log 
at volume is infinity. And over here, this is ideal gas. This is one. So this whole term is zero. <laughs> one note to the other. <laughs> okay. So this is why in the end on the right hand side, purely fugacity coefficient. Although the right hand side is a little bit crazy. And I see that I'm, I'm running out of time, but I'm pretty happy that we are able to manage those discussions. So if you think about the TPX, TVX discussions, we don't have you know, crazy mass over there. We just need to visit uh, those definitions the four energy equations, the uh, fugacity coefficient definition, the understanding of uh, fugacity coefficient at low pressure would be one. And then we need to manipulate a few terms. Uh, it's, not, it's not a very easy or very obvious at the very beginning, but I hope with, uh, with our discussion, you are able to see what is going on over there. And like I mentioned, in the end of the day, you don't need to uh, memorize all the uh, details, but you, you, you just need to, for example, this equation two shall be on your cheat sheet, okay? Moving forward, I would leave this to you uh, to see how we are going to now utilize uh, the uh, compressibility factor Z and try to, try to purely simplify this term. Okay, I'll leave the I'll leave the details to the class to figure that out. So in the end, this is uh, the equation. Also, pay attention, pay attention to the change of the integral. Okay. There shall be an negative sign if, if we switch the integral. Okay. Yeah. So I know it's uh, it's quite a lot to ask for. Uh, so this is why I, I, I asked the class to somehow review the lecture before before today's discussion so you don't have too much headache out of uh, out of this one hour. But but if you if you ask yourself now we've discussed three different ways. We've discussed the calculation of ideal gas, which is very happy to use the partial pressure. Ideal mixture, we don't know the uh, fugacity for the pure component, but uh, if I know, then I can calculate that very easily. Uh, the low solubility case, then I, I know I have Kernis law uh, coming out of the Taylor theory expansion to help us, although I also don't have the Kernis law constant uh, for time being, and really it's provided or we need to figure it out somewhere else. And then the third, the most general calculation is we're able to calculate this uh, uh, TPX or TVX. If I know something about the measurements or if I know the equation of state, then I can uh, pick up one of the two to run the calculation. Lastly, I, I want to ask you, why we don't discuss the liquid fugacity calculation? Why it's always about gas phase? Because gas is cooler than liquid, not in temperature, just in you know, general. Yeah, that, that could be the answer. Liquids have constant volume? Mm, well, it could change. We can add more liquids. Okay. Does it deal with the compressibility factor? Uh... Compressibility, uh, yes, we can use that for liquids and solids. Any idea why we are always talking about gas, fugacity, and uh, uh, fugacity coefficient calculation? Why not mention anything about liquid or solid? I've got it, because gas is in the word fugacity. And so there's going to be a different 
term for what fugacity would be <laughs> for liquid. No, that would be too much for for everybody, right? We don't need to define another universe to describe liquids or solids. But let me give you the answer. This is because we, we, we are looking at the equilibrium. And when we have the fugacity for gas, we know the answer to the corresponding liquid or solid. Oh. Right, so there's no need to calculate a separate liquid. So the liquid at equilibrium with the vapor, if I finish calculating the vapor, I have the answer and the answer shall be the same. Well, can I counter that? Uh, I was thinking that, but if you calculate it for liquid, you have the vapor as well, right? Yes. So is it harder just to calculate for the liquid instead of the vapor or? That's your second grade comment manual for, the, for this lecture. Yeah, quick answer is yes. However, the whole system, the whole system is, is, uh, is built up from the ideal gas understanding. Try to uh, 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 modify, try to account for the interaction. So we have a much better understanding. We have lots of equations for the vapor phase, but for the liquid, not too much information over there. I got it now. So. Yeah. All right. So uh, I guess that's all I want to share uh, with the class today. And uh, uh, we'll come back with some questions to somehow uh, practice and somehow have a solid feeling what is going on if I have a problem in the exam. OK? OK. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, sure. See you. Yeah. See you next. Uh, no, this coming Thursday. <laughs>